Good morning. Yep, those are old. This morning, everything went wrong. <laughs> I could not. I like <laughs> you have multiple oh, where'd you get them
be seated. We have the youngest announcer we have ever had this morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, y'all bear with me. Settle in. We're going to be here for a while with these announcements. So, for starters, we have the shoebox ministry. All of your information here is on this insert, and we're having the uh, assembly party when? November 13th. November 13th. They should already So, okay. We're going to celebrate. Okay. So, we're celebrating on November 13th having a send-off we've got a uh, couple of another fundraiser for Guatemala missions there's an insert in your bulletin detailing more information um, why we're doing that and what it's gonna be going towards and it's going to be uh, Jimmy smoking ribs and so those will be available for pickup those will be available for pickup November 4th and 5th $25 for a slab and when do we have a cutoff date when the orders need to be in by or just just not yet, not yet? <laughs> there you go so if you if you call in it's too late it's too late um and then next week we are having um right next week is the fish fry friend day so invite people to come with you um bring a dessert let uh, mama jesse or miss Juana know what you're bringing and we will have, uh, all of the frying will be done in peanut oil, and there'll be a limited amount of baked chicken fingers for non-fish or non-peanut oil uh, people. So we also have next week, um, Miss Sharon Clay Schulte's birthday party. We're celebrating, and if you have not RSVP'd to that, the information's there in your bulletin to RSVP. And let's see. We are having all the parents are leaving from here to go to Helena Hollow immediately following service. We will have lunch there, right? Mm -hmm. That's meet in the children's area after service, and then we will head out together. And then last but definitely not least, we have convocation forms available. So if you have a student who is wanting to go to our winter retreat, January 13th through the 16th, um, please get, let me or Matt know and we will get you guys a form so that you can have a student be a part of that. It's a really good uh, event, and we really enjoy going every year. With that, let's do our call to worship. If you'd stand with me. Out of Psalm 92, uh, verses 4 and 5. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. I also forgot session is meeting today after immediately after service so stick around if you're there let's pray heavenly father we thank you for letting us be here today god we thank you for the blessing that the fellowship that we have is god we pray that you just be here with us fill this place with your presence god fill our praise as we sing to you and god we pray that you should be with pastor donnie as he delivers the word help it to be uh, give him the words that you want us to hear today god we thank you for all the blessings you poured out on us we love you and we praise you in your son's name we pray amen Fuck. 
doing this today so until I saw Jimmy this morning and Jimmy with a sense of humor I thought he was tricking me or kidding me <laughs> he says you're either doing the announcements or the offertory I said no I'm not he goes yes you are <laughs> so thank you Jimmy <laughs> but uh have a passage out of Luke I want to share uh the Luke uh chapter 12 is uh, to to whom much is given much is required and what that means is you know God has given us so much you know he's given us the fact that he's given us life and breath, that alone is enough t uh, to thank him and give him back everything. Uh, I want to mention there are a lot of people who think that tithing and giving is Old Testament, but something I remembered Pastor Johnny saying before is if you really think that way, if you look at the New Testament, Jesus says, if you truly want to follow me, he says, sell all your possessions, give it to the poor, uh, to pick up your cross and follow me. So... Well, that having said that, we should give everything away if you look at it like that. You know, Jesus says, give it all away. Give, it, give your, you know, your possessions to the poor. So it's not Old Testament. It's definitely New Testament even more. Uh, it's funny because I didn't realize I was doing this today, but God spoke to me in the way here and says, um, this is a different topic, but he said, I want you to remind them of the power of prayer. He says, the power of your prayers for each other. Because what our prayers do is they strengthen each other and they, they touch the heart of God. When he sees us praying for each other, his hand moves. His hand moves in a mighty way. And I know personally in my own life, in the past couple of weeks, I felt your prayers. And I thank you so much. But he truly wanted me to remind us that prayer is what keeps us strong. Prayer is what keeps us together. And together, we are stronger together. Uh, so with that, I'll have, ask the ushers to come forth. Well, God, we just thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, for we know this is the day that you have made, God. You have given us life. You have given us breath. You have given us hope. You have given us everything that we need, God. And Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. Lord, we, God, we just I repent if we don't thank you enough, Lord, because, Lord, uh, without you, we would be nothing, God. Without you, we wouldn't even be here. Without you, we wouldn't have this church. Without you, we wouldn't have these people here, Lord. So, God, we just love you this morning. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we ask that you take this, these tithes and this money and use it, God, for your glory, for your kingdom purpose, to help your church grow, God, because that is your heart to see as your church grow and expand uh, for your kingdom, Lord. So, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Give the person next to you a hug or high five if they're not a toucher. I saw the rise, I saw the rise here. But my heart may fall, I saw the rise, I saw the rise here. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. In the water's rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. There's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. For joy 
for this morning it comes from John chapter 17 verses 13 to 19 I'm coming to you now but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one they are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may truly be sanctified. You can be seated. Lost our sin, find their way at the sound of your great name. All condemned, feel no shame at the sound.
as we pray together. Father, we are thankful that it is your great name that's above all names. And at that name, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. And that day will come soon. But Lord, in the meantime, may we proclaim Christ and his love and his justice even in this day and time. And we thank you, Father God, for how that you have blessed us, that you've given us all that we need for this life and how we live this life. And I ask you, Lord God, that as we go through this life, that you'll show us those things that we need to be changed and how our lives need to be changed. And I thank you for that, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I have, in this life, a lot of times, I try to figure things out, and I am not saying I, I got things figured out because there's an alarm that goes off in me on a weekly basis. Now, 
I know life is passing me by at 62 years old. I was talking, I, when I talked to my sons, I realized they use terms all the time that have no meaning whatsoever to me. <laughs> A zero, zero. I think I'm up to speed on things, and I have to stop them in the midst of their conversation and say, what does that mean? Now, I go back to the days where everything was cool and groovy. We knew what those were. You know, there's just cool, groovy, and things like that are way out, you know, far out. All those things were very simple and to figure out. Nowadays, cap is one of those things, which means you're lying. Throwing shade on somebody is dissing them. <laughs> Gaslighting is basically blaming them for something that you're really guilty for. There were others that Seth was saying he couldn't remember them. He was saying the other night, and I was like, stop what does that mean i have no idea what you just said it's like a whole nother language i remember when it first came out where sick was good when something is sick i was like okay do we need to pray for it <laughs> is it going to get well so i am behind the times i'll be the first to tell you i don't know if i understand all languages i barely understand the english language barely Somebody uh, asked if I know Spanish, because I do not. I, they used to call me at college the big Puerto Rican, because I had a mustache in college. And that's what Lynn labeled me as, as the big Puerto Rican. And so the black girls, that they look at me and they say, where are you from? Because I wasn't, they were delivering refrigerators, and I wasn't talking a whole lot. We had the refrigerators we rented out for SGA, and so for whatever reason, I was a mule. And uh, so I delivered the refrigerators, and I remember these black girls stopped me one time and they said, where are you from? And I looked down and said, what? Because we had a lot of Middle Eastern people there, and I was like, Birmingham, Alabama? <laughs> they said, we thought you were from over there in the Middle East somewhere. I was like, no, no, just right here. But I hadn't said a whole lot that day when I was moving refrigerators. I am alarmed by a lot of things in this day and time because I don't understand how we got here, but we are here in this nation. We're here in a lot of ways that I, and I, I said in, in the title in this, Embracing Truth in Woke Times. The word woke and wokeism of this day, for those of you that are older than me, this wokeism is a term that everybody is, gets a hold of. I remember the first time I heard it, I think, was Josiah at our house, and he used the word woke. You need to be more woke. And I was like, what? What does that mean? Wokeism is this awakening to the social justice of whatever this culture is defining, the injustices of social justice, and it's a whole different way of looking at life. And, the, and being woke means you're awakened to this new cultural revolution that has taken place. I was listening to a parent this past week, and she was challenging a school board. I'm pretty sure it was this one. There was a couple of things. I might get them twisted so you can go back and look in your news articles. She was challenging the school board's backing of a Halloween event that was bringing in a drag queen. And that drag queen was sponsored by some kind of strip club to go to our school-age kids and to do all the sponsorship. How did we get here? I know that's California, and we all just say, well, that's California, that's the way it goes, but I appreciate that mother standing up and saying, there is something wrong with this picture. Let me bring it closer to home. AL.com this week had another situation like that where this drag queen was reading, it was a, I think it was just an adoption center of pets or something, but was going to be reading a book, and they were bringing a drag queen in to read to kids. Now, I know normal is not posh these days. We have to draw out the weirdest and the, and the strangest things. What used to be marginalized in my day, even our hippies that smoked dope and had long hair and did things that, you know, I don't know if y'all remember this, the song, Signs, Signs, everybody's got signs. <laughs> you know, I, that was always the, that was the, the cry, you know, no help, you know, help needed, need not apply if you got long hair. Um, all that's, that's a whole nother generation away. But in this AL.com 
thing was this drag queen was going to read at this thing it was where kids were I, I wasn't necessarily because it wasn't school sponsored at all but what I was alarmed was this was a middle school teacher I'm alarmed by that I'm not woke in that sense I will never be woke we have taken in wokeism, we have taken and taken those that feel marginalized because nowadays, I can remember growing up and we used to think because pedophiles is the lower feeders and police officers tell you that they're the bottom feeders in jail. They don't get, I mean, it's bad for them in jail. No matter what you do, it's still going to be bad. But now we're just calling them minor attracted people. They're just minor attracted people. They're attracted to minors, is all they are, in some places. Not here in Alabama, we still call them pedophiles. Is there forgiveness in all this? Yes. Is there transformation in all this? Yes. Will they keep our nursery? No. This past summer, North Shelby was doing the, uh, redoing their library, North Shelby Library. And so they needed somewhere to meet and do their activities. Jess and I met with them. And I remember talking to the lady. I said, here's the deal. Do whatever you want. We'll provide because we're a community church. We'll provide space. We'll let you do whatever and have animals and stuff in the family life. So it was really neat. I went and saw several of their presentations. But I said, one thing you won't do is bring a drag queen in to read to kids. If that's on your agenda, that's out. And they said, no, nope, we will honor whatever it is. Not that they're going to do that. Hopefully in this community, we don't necessarily aren't that woke, I hope. Reason I bring this is not to bring everybody down looking at this, but we are in a battle, and I am so alarmed, and I can't put words to it, and I've started looking at this trying to say, how do we battle in this day and time? The Bible tells us in Ephesians that there are principalities and powers that are at war against us. The Bible tells us that we got to gird ourselves with the armor of God every day. But here's one of the problems I believe is the church is just like when I'm trying to talk to my sons and trying to understand the words of these days, we are not well informed in a lot of ways because we'll sit and listen to something. Well, that doesn't pertain to me. That doesn't have anything to do with me, but it has a lot to do with us because we've even had some of our kids that go to our national events that, and, and there's nothing, I, I, we've had events that when you go, you got kids that feel like they need to trans from one sex to another. You can't do that. Wokeism says you can do that. Wokeism says, let's just do whatever, but you cannot. And the reason I want to deal with wokeism today, because it is as alarming as what we've seen in the rise of Islam, the rise of wokeism is a secular religion that is coming forth to challenge the church. If we do not recognize this challenge, because I bet you are just like me, that you have felt at times that you have to qualify a lot of the things that you say. Why do you have to do that? Used to, when we were growing up, everything was black and white. It was a truth. Here's a truth. Let me present you with the truth. Now, every truth is challenged through the religion of wokeism, because wokeism is whatever is that feeling of that day or whatever it, and I'm going to give you a few definitions here in just a second. But what we're challenged with is the church. And that's why I say there are absolute truths. And I tell this to our young people because those that are going to college, they're going to challenge every bit of this saying there is no absolute truths. And those truths can be changed over a period of time. You and the church are just like ignorant little puppies. Your eyes will open one day. I don't know if anybody else was alarmed by what we saw back in, I think it was a, right after the George Floyd. I was alarmed by watching George Floyd's death. But what happened out, I think it was in Spokane or Seattle. It was out in the West. And they set up this whole, you could not go into this one zone. They, it was the chop zone is what they called it. They named it after the French Revolution. That was so alarming to me sitting here in Birmingham, Alabama, watching a, a section of a town be sectioned off and they were in charge of that section they had their own weapons they had their own this had their own that police would not even go in there and the woke politicians were so woke that they wouldn't even challenge it and i'm sitting there going why does that that should not bother us here in birmingham alabama but it does in a sense because i look at that going 
And they had murders in there. They had rapes in there. They had all kind of things because you've got to have absolute truths in order to keep a society in order. There's got to be something based on absolute truths. And that's why I say absolute truths is something that maybe I would say if you go to college and your professors that are so enlightened, that's one of the things they were always challenged because absolute truth is coming from somewhere that has absolute power. And so powers are always going to be challenged. That's what the religion of wokeism will do is it challenges all power of this day and time. It's no different than the hippie movement. It really isn't. It's just another step in a long line. It's no different than anything we've seen in the past, even in this nation. But the whole activity of getting Christianity pulled down and even what we see in most of our churches and mainline denominations, even including ours to a certain extent, is we're finding the LBG community. I can't use all, I don't remember all of them, just say LBGT. I don't, I don't get them all, sorry. Um, but even in that community, it's being challenging to the church because they're saying, you do not own absolute truth when it comes to our lives. We do. What we say is go. That's why you can have pedophiles being renamed to being minors attracted people because when you challenge the absolute truth of scriptures even then you can come up with there's all there's i don't know how many genders we have now according to wokeism because it's the religion of the day but they have genders galore you got names i asked gabriel because he went to uab and he can give me some of those names and stuff in some of his classes that you have names of different things. Now, where we grew up, you had male, you had female, and then you had weird. <laughs> I know that's not woke and that's not kind and that's not sensitive. I grew up that way. I was a very insensitive guy. Male, female, and then everything else is weird. You want to name yourself anything else. You say, well, why is that important? Well, I look at it. I can remember coming home from Bethel College one semester I had a friend of mine that it was at college he was dealing in the homosexual lifestyle and we all left he lived in McKenzie Tennessee we all left McKenzie McKenzie was a suitcase college any time any excuse you had to leave McKenzie you left and I can remember I came home that that week and 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 word got to me that this particular individual was suicidal he said he probably would not be there if he stayed in McKenzie because it was dark. And where he was, he was trying to get out of that lifestyle. And I said, well, come on, go home with me. Alarmed my mom because I'm bringing a gay guy home with me. Wasn't dating. <laughs> <laughs> Alarming to my mom. I went to work construction, and I, he spent the week at the house because my heart was so that I didn't want to see him die because he was entrapped in a lifestyle that I believe is detrimental to even your soul. I can't in this day and time in which I live in this wokeism that we live in and this religion that we call wokeism. I'll get to scriptures in just a second. But the religion we call wokeism, I will not sacrifice somebody's life at the altar of this religion. And by doing so, we've got a lot of people, you probably got grandkids somebody's got grandkids or somebody they know that is dealing with this transgender stuff that's going on. I don't know how many of y'all, when you grew up, you always had somebody that had identity issues and that kind of stuff. Now we're supposed to, in this religion of wokeism, embrace it. You've got to embrace it in order to say you love them. No, no. When I took that, that fellow home, he was a friend. Didn't agree with his lifestyle and believe his choices, but loved him. And it brought him home because I wanted to see his life preserved. When I speak to somebody with truth of scriptures, it's not that you hate them. You speak with love. And when you present truth, what you end up doing is you can save their lives by presenting truth. What you cannot do is just to ignore and buy into what I call the wokeism of the day. And that you got to be awake as everybody else and say, well, if they want to identify as a they, and like I told you, I do not violate my grammar principles. That's violating grammar rules. You know that. And I had some mean grammar teachers, and they wouldn't let me do that. You can't be a they. you got to be a he or a she because God made male, God made female. 
those are the absolute truths that I grew up with, what I found in Scripture. But the whole challenge of this religion of wokeism is to challenge the Scripture and say it's not true. When you say that someone is struggling with these identity issues or the sexual identity stuff, you've got to be able to present truth. and You've got to come from a foundation of truth that God created male and female. He didn't create a bunch of different 42,000 different, whatever it is we come up with, he created male, he created female. Why is that important? Because the very foundations you'll find in Genesis is always going to be challenged. And to challenge that means you're challenging the very power of God. And you're saying that cannot be true because our reality of this day is you've got this person that feels like they're a man trapped in a woman's body or a woman trapped in a man's body. We in those days when I was growing up, you would never, after you found out you had a middle school teacher who was very influential, on a very troubled time most of the time in kids lives you would never let them stand before class because every one of us in middle school knew a lot of what was going on in our teachers lives outside of the classroom that is an influential position you would never put them in let me give you a little bit of definition on what I say when I say wokeism. It's a religion that has no skin in the game, basically, because you don't have to. Basically, it will change. It will never be the same. If you go back to the 1984, it's the news speak. It's what you find, and everything changes. As I said, as I listen to my sons talk, and, I, I, and nothing, their words are just words they're using now, and I have to get definition when you find that the foundations of our very nation is built upon the freedom of speech, but it's inalienable rights that are given to us by God that is based in the foundation of Scripture. That's the whole principle of this. Yes, we have been wrong as a nation at times, but we have suffered. And you can go back to the Civil War. There was suffering that went on because we violated some of the principles, even of our Constitution and our foundation of our biblical principles. There was a great price to be paid and all that we find even this day and time freedom of speech is under attack the foundation of our nation of li nation's liberties and our freedoms are very much being attacked wokeism is this new religion i found an author that wrote this and he gave us an understanding wokeism is built out of what's called a critical theory it was early 20th century german school of philosophy in frankfurt school they developed a social philosophy which is called critical theory in a nutshell critical theory critiques and culture critiques a culture and challenges the underlying power structures of society it is a movement to liberate human beings from the circumstances that enslaved them you realize your Christianity enslaves you. I am a bond servant of Christ. Been bought with a price. This is what they want to do is this whole society and Western society has been enslaved by biblical principles. Reinterpreting Western culture as a story of oppressors versus the oppressed. In critical theory, the only things that exist are hierarchies of power, and those hierarchies must be torn down. The goal of the movement, whether it's stated or not, is not less than the, completely, the complete dismantling and rebuilding of Western culture from the ground up. That's why you'll see more and more, and this is why it's so important that you as a Christian understand there are absolute truths. Because they want to tear down the very principles that this whole nation was built upon. It says it's not just a political or social movement within a framework of traditional enlightened values. Concepts such as logic, science, reason are viewed as tools of the oppressive white patriarchy. It said values like individualism, hard work, punctuality, delayed gratification would be understood as perpetuating white supremacy. If you get a loan for school, young people, plan to pay it back. That's the truth. Now, I just oppressed them by saying that. But that's the way a lot of us grew up. That's why the very thing of wokeism is being challenged today is that you got to have it and I got to have it now and somebody else has got to pay for it if I can't have it now. That's why we're having the, so, the whole challenge that's going on and everything. So the critical theory has become much more than just a social philosophy. It is a primary phys phys philosophical driving force behind all the new religion of civil religion of wokeism the goal of this whole wokeism is dismantle the whole western society i look at it all and i'm wondering because we either develop our faith from what we believe 
on the absolutes of the Word of God or some absolute. Now, everybody has different absolutes. If you grew up with somebody who has a strong personality in your family and you didn't grow up with the Bible, you grew up with whatever their absolutes they pass to you. They could be right, they could be wrong. You can find yourselves, if you grew up in this in different places in the South, you, you, you had different things that were just built in you naturally. That was just the, the community order that was built in you. I fight sometimes some bad theology that come that has been built in people has no biblical relevance whatsoever. There's just bad theology. People come up and say, Brother Don, don't you believe that God helps those that help themselves? I've, no, that's not in the scripture. You can't find it anywhere. God helps those who can't help themselves. He gives grace, his power, to those who can help themselves. I don't mean to blow anybody's theology out of the ground. God wants you to do everything that you can. You keep moving. He's going to help you along the way. I know what that concept means is you got to keep moving. You got to do everything that you can. You got to hustle. God's always there. He'll strengthen you. But even when you can't and you get to that place, the Word of God says, His grace is sufficient in my weakness. And not until I have found my weakness do I find the sufficiency of His grace. Wokeism is one of the most dangerous things that we're seeing today because it is a religion. And it's preying upon those that actually, I believe, you as a Christian and youth that are sitting here today, and you've gone through your Christian upbringing and stuff because they're developing a belief system out of whatever truths they call truth in a culture in which we're living now. Their truth says there can be 42 different genders. There cannot. Biologically, I remember, I think it was a professor here recently that got challenged at a school because he would not teach that. It was, it was against biological rules, basically. You cannot come up with that. Your DNA is God-given, and it's woven in us who we are. Bruce Jenner will always be male. Always. You can take it and put it under a microscope in his DNA. It will be male, no matter what wokeism says. Now, he can feel whatever he wants to feel when he gets up in the morning, be whatever he wants to be, and that's the freedom part, great part of America. One of the most ironic things, I was thinking about this in the wokeism of today, the very ones that I have stood, I've stood with the officers over at Hoover when there's protests going on. I have stood there and watched them protect the very people that are spitting on them because they believe in the individual rights that our Constitution gives us. Wokeism says, no, we've got to tear this down because it doesn't belong anymore. That we need to be in charge. And our belief system, whatever we believe of this day, needs to be in charge. That you are oppressive. And I loved it because we had our black brothers standing there protecting those in the Black Lives Matter. And they're saying, you're a traitor. Da, 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 da. I was like, no, he's standing here because he believes in what he believes. I find it interesting, let me give you this, because I do find it interesting that they don't have in, their Christian, in our Christianity, they don't like Christianity, and what they want to do is tear down, but the religion of this day is a tribalistic vision of the world. The only thing that exists is power, and the only power that exists is when power and control are necessary. You've got to tear down. It's a corrupt system. So what we see in this day of wokeism and what we see what's going on is that they're building a whole other religion. They're saying you've got to do this. Now, this is the idea of... And this is the, the religion. This is one guy's writer. Take it for what it is. But he says, it says, the idea of sin, which is privilege, righteousness, which is victimhood, damnation, which is cancellation, are well established within wokeism. While it provides rituals of penance, which means check your privilege and allianceship, and piety, which means you got to kneel at the anthem or posting other things. And it says, it never offers forgiveness. In a recent interview with Dave Rubin, theological, uh, theologian David Fianocci, he said, described the phenomena. If I'm stuck in the oppressor group and there's no escape in it, there can be no forgiveness. If there's no repentance, right? Like it's how, how does it work? He says, I'm just perpetually a sinner. I'm just going to continue to perpetuate the oppression group and there's nothing I can do about it. Of course, cancel culture is actually the logical conclusion of cancel 
the critical theory because they've got to get rid of the oppressor class. Now, here's the ironic thing. I believe in that trop part out west, they brought a guillotine to Jeff Bezos' house. Because you've got to do away with those who disagree if they will not believe. Now, the reason I say all that is we're finding more and more because this religion is growing. I am alarmed by that. I am alarmed by what I saw out in California, what I see in Huntsville, because we're normalizing what should not be normal, what should be repented of. We normalize it. We're even struggling within our mainline denominations because right now you cannot, you cannot hear and say that all homosexuals can repent. People say that's insensitive. You can't do that. You spend too much time on that, Brother Dime, but it is what is a part of this cancel culture, is a part of this wokeism that's like a tidal wave that's coming in over the church, and we're all looking going, what shall we do? Well, let's just apologize and try to get along. Scripture never does that. Never. Never. Because if we do, it would be like my friend if I said, just be well and just go ahead and be homosexual. He would have committed suicide because he knows there's something that's on the inside of him. No matter how we change society, there'll always be something on the inside saying this is not right until you get like Romans where you get so darkened where you don't even care anymore. We say, well, we, and I've had friends of mine that are so much into the wokeism, they said that doesn't apply to this. I have watched people to walk in darkness that they lose total conviction of darkness no matter what it is. What does James say? If we sin, we want more sin. And if we want more sin, then we get more sin. And then eventually what? Creates death. Those are truths that we cannot deny. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he also shall reap. The reason I say all this is there is an alarm that is happening in this nation. There is a, a blast that is going out because we're creating a belief system on victimhood and saying, I've got to have somebody and I've got to have a reason to say somebody's oppressing me and I can't get out of here. And that oppression's coming from you who are Christians. You're oppressing me. If I can just get free of this. And what is the whole thing we've seen all through Scripture? If we can just build our own God, then the God of all heavens, we can make him go away. What was the whole issue in the Old Testament was they kept fighting against these gods they would build. Oh, you want another one? We got another one for you, you know? And you'll find that that is what this society even now is trying to do through our young people is they're building this wokeism religion that says, you can't say that. If you say that, you are canceled. You're put in Facebook prison. You're put in Twitter prison. Somebody, I mean, it was the other day, there was, I can't even remember what it was. It was just a saying, and it was a little cow across a, a horse. Facebook blocked that. And it was just some nice scripture or something. But it was a little calf where a cattle guy had just rescued him. But Facebook said, this is probably you don't want to see this. This could be harmful. I'm like, I want to meet those people in the basement. They need to get out of the basement, whoever's doing that, in Facebook. They haven't lived life. And I look at them going, you know, it's not about me being more sensitive or you being more sensitive. It's about us holding to the truths of God. The whole religion of wokeism, you know how much sensitivity and diversity training we go through to kneel at the altar of wokeism? Do I want us to be more sensitive? Do I think that we need to watch our words? Do we think that the South at times was very racist? We have come a long way, folks. Yes, I believe. I grew up in that time. But I'm telling you, folks, what we're seeing today and what we're seeing at the pain at the penance and the altar of wokeism, and I do not believe this knee will not bow to that religion. This knee won't. Because I do look at it and I say there's a hope for this nation, but the only hope is going to be found in Christ. I can remember years ago at Promise Keepers, I had no problem with the, the whole idea of public repentance, of past sins. But I never could feel that part of Promise Keepers. I don't disagree with it. It was repentance of our 
in, in things that we did in the past in this nation. There's something needed in some of that, but I can't wear something that is not mine. I will repent when I have done things to others. But I cannot carry the burden because I look at people because it's like when I started this out, I had the ladies at college ask me what I was. That could be offensive, couldn't it? Dark, mustache, couldn't figure out what I was. I don't know what I am either. I'm a mutt. <laughs> Some days I look in the mirror, I don't know what part of it needs to apologize to the next part in this religion of wokeism, you know? I wonder, as we look at the absolutes of Scripture, and I will use this here in John. He says, I'm coming to you now to say these things, and I say it's st- in the, I'm still in this world so that you may have the full measure of my joy within you. Have y'all seen, and I'm telling you, this religion of wokeism that we're dealing with, a secular wokeism, they're angry, they're hateful, they're mean. They ain't got no joy. I wouldn't join them for that one reason alone. I'm like, y'all are a bunch of downers. I got to go spit on people and shout at people all the time. I'm like, woo. Well, I do that every Sunday. (laughs) Not meaning to. He said, I have joy within them. I said, I've given you the word, them the word. And the, and the world hated them. Hear me on this. If you hold to this, this new religion of wokeism says that you are so antiquated and you're making victims of everybody else that's maybe not your shade. No. There's something wrong with those truths. I will not hold to them. I love my brothers, my sisters. I don't care what color you are. Don't put me in a category. Don't bench me because of what you think. Wokeism will bench you. It'll cancel you. He said, my prayer is not that you'll take them from the world. See, this is what God's telling. But here's the deal. You want you to hear this. You're still here for a reason. You protect them from the evil one. Who is the evil one? There's a real devil. Wokeism says... It's you. Wokeism says the devil is you. You just don't realize it. And it's, some of it has to do with color of skin. Some of it has to do because you got a two-car garage. Some of it has to do with that you're whatever. They, whatever they name it as, that's what that is. But it's all satanically orig- originated because it's always against the power of the Almighty. It wants to challenge the very principles that we find within Scripture. It says, my prayer is this, and it's that they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. And this, is, listen to this part. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Embracing the truth in these woke times means that we hold to the word of God. Why is it important that we do not? And if you feel, and here's the way that you can do. If you feel the pressure of wokeism, the rhythm of wokeism coming at you, understand they're not going to like you because you're going to hold to his. They're not going to like you. They're not going to want you to tell that gay friend that you can be forgiven, that you can repent Because they said, this is just the way they're born. They're not going to want you to tell your grandchild, and you can look at them with all the love in the world. That grandchild comes in and says, you know as your granddaughter, and now today they want to be your grandson. you got to look at them and say, baby, I love you. I love you. But that's just wrong. But don't you know that's insensitive? That's just wrong. Wokeism wants you to bow a knee at their ideal beliefs, whatever the shifting of it is today, whatever that is. I will never say pedophiles are just minor attracted people. They need help. They need help. There's something wrong with that. And as a society, as a Western civilization that's built on biblical principles, we've got to stand in this place. And listen to me, folks. The way you're going to know you're being challenged with this new religion of wokeism is you feel this cowering on the inside of you when you feel the challenge of it all. And you've got to make a decision at that point and that cowering whether I'm going to bow my knee to this new wokeism religion. 
Because you're always going to be stuck if you're a Christian as the oppressor group. Because you will not accept and just say, that's just the way they were. They're just born this way. I was born a sinner. Left to my own devices, I am destructive. Left to my own devices, every sin can run rampant. Left to my own devices, I would hate God. But thanks be to God, he's given me the grace. He's intervened with his truth. Somebody loved me enough to tell me that Jesus could set me free from my sin. Not to just to say, let me embrace you, baby, and just you just stay like you are. My mother was one of the greatest instruments of God because she would tell me the truth. She'd look me square in the eyes and say, baby, I love you, but that is just wrong. Oh, she was so insensitive. <laughs> and she made my backside so insensitive. <laughs> and I praise God for that. What do we do with this? We got to be sanctified in the word. Here's my challenge. I'm going to get some more on truth next week. Proverbs 17, 15. And I read this as another translation than what's in the New NIV, but in Proverbs 17, 15, it says, He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination before the Lord, abomination before the Lord. Both of them. He who justifies the wicked and condemns the righteous are an abomination before the Lord. Wow. Eight, 1984, the novel. Double think. It said two contradictory beliefs is what double think was. Two contradictory beliefs in one's mind, and they believe that both can be true. I've got Christians who say Jesus is the only way, but we've got a section of people that do not have to repent. That's double speak. That's 1984, George Orwell. And that occupies in the same mind. They don't have to. That's just the way they are. Even though Scripture says this. Absolute truths are being challenged. And so, so what do we do? Our calling. Know what you believe. If you know what you believe, you will not cower in the days where they're challenged. It is going to be challenged in this day and time. Knowledge of what you believe is found in Scripture and only in Scripture. You need to break it open, read it, get the principles of the Word of God. And it's not just reading it, but getting those principles in us. Why is it important in this day and time that we believe that God made male, God made female? Because that is being challenged. Know what you believe. Know why you believe it. So that when the day comes that you are challenged, because the Bible says right here, it says his word is his truth. And it says he knows that we're living in a time that evil is going to come against us. For some of them, I, I sanctify themselves. May they too truly be sanctified. We need to be set apart with the word of God and being firm in that place. Second thing I'll tell you to do is know your call Know, know why you're called. Know that calling and that knowledge of that calling as a Christian. And then I'll tell you this. We've got to be bold in this day and time. Know things that are going on. When you read the headlines, read them. Not just to be read them and shake our heads and say, boy, that's bad. There may be some school board meetings that some parents would have to go to because that seems to be where the battle is right now. That seems to be where the FBI will investigate you. That or a pro-life clinic. I'm not saying that we all become out here and become these big advocates of this. I'm saying beware of this new religion of wokeism. Beware. If you feel that you're hesitant to speak a truth that you know is scripturally based, be careful. That's the first step that it gets you to step back and go, well, that's, I, just, I just want to be sensitive. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Thank God. And I will say this, and I don't mean to say it rough. The truth of God offended the hell out of me. Because I was bound for hell. But the truth of God offended me so much to tell me I was a sinner. 
that I needed Jesus. And he is the only way, the only truth, the only life. I'm so grateful for that, folks. And for the woke drag queen middle school teacher in Huntsville, Alabama, I pray for him. I pray for him. That a truth will get, not a truth from a scripture compromised church that says, hey, baby, you're okay. We like you just like you are. I love you as you are. Because Christ loves us. But his word sets us aside. Be bold. The Bible says that we are to be the bold, the righteous, or as bold as a lion. I'm not saying it's easy, folks. The sermon's not easy. But if I could tell you any one thing, that prophetic voice on the inside of me, there is an alarm going off. Wokeism may change names tomorrow. I don't know. But it is a new secular religion that's asking you to bow your knee, to be sensitive towards it, and never speak the absolutes of the truth of the Scripture. That's an alarm. This church, New Hope, as long as I'm pastor and as long as these elders are here, we won't bow our knee. We will not bow our knee. Nobody's asking us to do it this moment, but that day's coming. We just will not bow our knee. Young people, please understand this. You got people that you're around that are struggling with their identities. The greatest thing you can do to love them is to tell them about the love of Jesus. Tell them about that God can free them. Do we all struggle with sin? Yes. Every person struggles with sin. And all you can do, and the greatest thing you do is to warn them not to embrace sin because once sin is embraced, it captivates them to death. The greatest lie that you'll ever hear is that if you'll just in, let God embrace them as what they are and where they're heading and their wokeism, then they won't be suicidal. That's the greatest lie you'll ever hear. That does not take care of. The only thing that takes care of that is the heart being changed. Finding the love of God. This is a tough one today, folks. Let's stand together and we're going to close in prayer. We're not going to sing. We're just going to close in prayer. I want you to go away thinking. Don't even worry about it. Band, don't even worry about it today. I want you to walk out of here thinking, what is my part? When I walk out of here today, I know I'm going to be around a lot of people. Our part, number one, is the truth that Jesus Christ is the only way, the only truth, the only life. The scriptures will never change. They'll be challenged, but they'll never change. Father, we ask you, we're living in the midst of a battle not just for the heart of this nation, but Lord, it is coming against Christianity in so many different places. This nation is in peril right now. We need you. We need a revival of souls. We need a revival of hearts. But Lord, we need a revival of embracing the truth of the word of God. That without Jesus, we're all doomed for hell. Without Christ, every sinner is bound for hell. But because of Christ and that forgiveness, that is a truth that is uncompromising. But we all need to repent. All of us need to repent to know that. So, Father, I pray that we stand boldly in this day and time. I ask you as a church that you will sanctify us with your word. Lord, let us recognize the dangers that are going on around us. But most of all, Father, I pray that you'll let your church stand firm in this day. We will not kneel to a religion, whether it's called wokeism, secularism, whatever it's called. And with all the tentacles that go out from that, 
But Lord, may we stand in this day and time with your boldness, your word that transforms lives. And Lord, if we ever feel like we've got a cower because the demand of the knee bowing to sensitivity, remind us that your love does offend. And it does offend us to life. So Father, I'm asking you, release your church in this day and time to stand firm that we will not be cowering to the enemy's plots of this day and time. Thank you for that, Father. May we go forth united in your purpose, called according to your word and proclaiming your truth in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. If you need to talk some more, anything on this today, get with me.